Hey everybody, this is Nintokis, and welcome back to Sketch Takes. Uh, apologies for the wait, but today we've got Min Min from ARMS for Fight Me I Plays Games. Uh, this drawing was actually on my queue for a long time, but it was requested not long after I made Sketch Extra, where I also drew Min Min. And not only did I want those two close together, but I, I don't like drawing the arms. I'm going to be honest with you. I've got uh, another drawing that took off when I used to do Tumblr stuff, where I had a spring man fighting little mac and i loved it to death but also those arms were the death of me something about drawing the springs but i know i did want to make a video on this because i really love arms and i felt that sketch extra really didn't get my full opinion of the series well the series it's one game but um i felt like i didn't get to talk about it enough not that there's a lot to say off just the one game but um i do feel it's very undersold not in sales i mean the game sold really well for a new ip i mean it's easy to say, oh yeah, it's a Nintendo game, of course it's going to sell well, but ARMS sold like millions for a brand new IP. It didn't have that same level of craziness that uh, Splatoon did, but it still did really well, and I think that more people should take a look at it. Now that the Nintendo games are going on sale more often for like 40 bucks, I, I feel it's worth it. But uh, here we go in this initial sketch phase right here, I'm trying to work out just how those arms twist. I don't think I got it super accurate, but... Um, I, I tried my damnedest. <laughs> you can see right here, I'm like trying to darken the inside so my brain can keep track of which is the inside, which is the outside. Uh, I think I had a little bit easier of a time because with Min Min's arms, they're kind of like straight noodles. So I didn't have to worry about them being spherical, but also twisting. But uh, I think I should just go back and start drawing coils before people ask me to draw arm stuff again for commissions. <laughs> Um, and here we got, I believe that's the Chakram. If I'm wrong, sue me, I guess. I forget. But yeah, no, these are a very interesting shape as well. I don't think I got these looking quite as solid as I really should have. I mean, for as much as I complained about the noodle arms, I think I did it all right. But here, my foreshortening is just a little bit off. You can see it's supposed to be a circle and it's just, it's looking a little bit loose, but it's all right. And another thing that I, you can see I had to get a second reference image for is actually Min Min's, I guess you'd call it chest armor. I, I really don't know what that would be called. But the back of it, it's weird. You see it so often in her actual game, but it's just something that I really don't draw very much attention to. Like, or I don't feel it's drawing my attention anyway. So I had to get another reference in there and pop that through. Um, going back to this game though, I... I feel like it was a lot of missed potential and I really hope they're working on a sequel over at Nintendo just because there were so many things that they did right. Like they supported the game for a solid year at the very least. They kept adding new characters that I felt were actually a little bit more interesting than the base cast. I feel like the uh, the game had a hard time finding its target audience just because the main cast all played very similarly. Each character had their own gimmicks or whatever, but it wasn't until we saw characters like Mizongo and Dr. Coyle where the devs felt a little bit more comfortable going crazy with the gimmicks each character had, like being able to float and turn invisible or lay down totems that give you different buffs if you run through them, but could also defend you from things. It's honestly, again, th those were all free characters, by the way. If you buy the game now, you get all of those. I highly recommend you give it a shot. It's got better online lobbies than Smash by a long shot. You're always in on the action. And it's still pretty active too, from what I know. Like every once in a while I boot the game up and I've got no problem finding actual just casual matches. Ranked, a little bit of a different story, but you at least can multitask while you're waiting for those. And I know I complained a little bit earlier about these, but again, it's so crucial trying to get these arms look solid, looking solid, I should say. And I can even see on her right arm, trying to get these curved and looking solid while they coil is quite a feat. I didn't quite nail it, but on her right arm, you can see there's like a little bit of a weird bend in the second wrap around of the coil. It's always in uh, retrospect. And I think uh, a lot of artists have this little thing where if once your work is finally done and you give it a night and you look back at it, you see all these little errors and stuff. You, you want to go back and fix them, but I feel like it's also important to just know when to throw in the towel and, and not like give up, but know when to call something done and take the lesson for the next drawing. It's one of my art professor's advice to me, and I, I guess I'll pass it on to you guys. Sometimes something will just be finished, and then you'll notice like four or five things after you post it on social media. And unless it's like ultra glaring, like you just straight up forgot to draw an entire limb, I mean, just, you know, I wouldn't even call it taking an L. Just take the, well, it is an L, but it's a lesson. It's not a loss. Take the lesson going forward. 
And I also believe I drew the large ball wrong, of which I also forget the name. Like, there were a lot of different angles I had to be aware of when drawing those little, like, smaller nodes on it that carry the electricity. And I feel like I wasn't as uh, strict as I should have been in terms of how we're looking at those from the point of view of this picture. It's one thing to draw a figure, and it's another thing to start drawing, like, really weird noodly things coming off of these characters. But it's a challenge. I believe that I've gotten so much better at uh, tackling little problems like this. And again, I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means. I'm okay at drawing. I do okay-ish. But I want to say that I've gotten better at uh, handling things that I'm not entirely sure about just from you guys. Uh, I've since stopped doing the uh, Twitch line art follower shenanigans. I don't know what you'd want to call that. <laughs> I don't want to call it a free offer. I sound like a Walmart. But... um. If you guys are watching this, I have since stopped doing the follower drawings and instead have opted to do subscription drawings. Not to devalue my commissions, but to also keep this up in a reasonable way. School came back in September and it's been kicking my butt, so uh, among other things. So I've had to slow down my role on video production and Twitch streaming. But uh, I'm keeping the art grind up. If you hit me up on Twitter, well, you know, if you just view my Twitter, you can see I'm still doing smaller things here and there trying to adopt the new style. And honestly, I'd like to also thank anybody who may be watching who is a new Twitter follower or mutual. I've noticed since they've reworked how retweeting works, a lot of artists on Twitter are banding together and just kind of, they're doing them art, they're calling them art shares, where they just kind of like put a whole bunch of stuff in there. And if you're watching this and you do art on Twitter, I highly encourage you, just search up art share on Twitter. I'll follow you back. I swear to you, I will. But um, a lot of people are dumping like four or five drawings that they've done and just letting people, you know, follow each other, build up the following. And I like that. There's a sense of camaraderie between the uh, Twitch and Twitter spheres, at least in my circles. I should pay a little bit more attention to YouTube and Instagram. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Speaking of paying attention, though, I've got like all these little foreshortening details that I'm trying to throw into her back here to give that backpack a little bit more depth. I was once told that more lines don't mean a more detailed drawing, and in most senses that's true, but sometimes you just need to make sure there are enough faces, quote unquote, to something to justify it being there in a 3D space, which is kind of the paradox of working with 2D line work, is you're always trying to make something pop, whether it be with thicker line work, an extra line to show that something has an extra face on the side of it, or, you know, just a dynamic set of lines, I guess. I, it's difficult to describe, but sometimes if you have different elements of something pointing in the same direction, it really does help. Or even just some nice curve. Like with this drawing in particular, there's like this S curve with the way her arms are flailing about. And I took that cue from a lot of the key art for arms as a series, not just Min Min's reference drawings that I used here. And there's just something about it that's just appealing. And that has a lot to do with staging a drawing, which I believe is very important. You can I don't want to say lack the technical skill. Maybe you could be short of where you want to be as an artist, but still make eye popping art if you just take that extra second before drawing and stage it. I mean, it's the difference between something that looks flat and something that looks dynamic. And as with most of my drawings, I don't believe I had it recorded for this one because I did it during a stream. But as with all my other videos, just throw a couple of thumbnails out there. See how you can make a drawing pop, how you can make a character move. What helps me is sometimes if I'm watching an action scene, just pause it in the middle of a random action scene from any show that you like. And if you get this specific moment that's very appealing to look at, like I notice in game trailers, sometimes they'll stop a character mid gameplay and pop them out like the recent No More Heroes trailer and, you know, work from that. And you'll kind of start to get a feel with how you could further push your own view of not just the human body, but any scene that you have. Just start flipping the camera around and see how it goes. <laughs> forgot a little bit of chunky line work on the foot, but here we go. That's Min Min. Fight me, I play his games. Uh, I rambled a little bit today, but I apologize. And right about here is where I would put the Patreon plug, but I have paused that as well. As said, things are quite slow, but as per usual, all my art can be found on DeviantArt Twitter, sometimes on Instagram, but I usually post phone doodles and other such things but follow me on those platforms if you want to keep up with what i'm doing i'm streaming on twitch every thursday 6 p.m that's smash and sketch and uh thank you so much for watching this far have a good one guys